so ends the life of the last of the judges. After 20 years of judging Israel. Personally, as Michael Wilcock points out in his book on this, Samson issues a dreadful warning to all of us. Because he was a man of enormous potential. Who never grasped that the Spirit's call to holy discipline is even more important than the Spirit's gifts. Is that a dangerous thing to say? The Spirit's call to personal discipline is even more important than the tremendous gifts that he's got. Gifting is no uh, way of dealing with a lack of discipline and walking with God. Being able can be a snare. Seems to be to him. Because all the time he was indulging these weaknesses of his, he was getting away with it by just coming out and picking up the city gates and walking off them. There you go. Covering his sin. Covering the, the implications of it, the, the outcome of it. By his gifting. Charles Simeon, the 19th century Cambridge preacher, brilliant guy, put it like this. Verily, there you go, that's verily thrown in every now and again. Verily, he says, the fetters of brass did not form a stronger bond for his feet than ungoverned passions make for the souls of men. Isn't that interpreted? Verily, you do. <laughs> you know, his unfettered passions, that is, letting his own selfish, sinful self run riot, was more of a, an imprisonment feature than the bronze fetters around his feet. Even reason and common sense, says Simeon, appear to fail the persons who are under their influence. Even reason and common sense have gone. So what are we to make of Samson, the man of God? I'm very, very glad that you know, we live in a later time. Yeah? And, you know, God hasn't been calling us to go out and be in that Philistines. would be cool. It would be cool, though, do you hear that? <laughs> yeah, but no. <laughs> yeah. Samson's living in a particular, particularly difficult time when there is no government, there is no state, there is no safety, there is no protection. These people live in tents, not walled cities, remember? And God has called him to something absolutely unique in a difficult, awful, bad situation. <clears throat> First of all, then you won't get Samson at all, unless you reckon on the fact that he's living in a time long before God's fullest revelation in Christ, in the age of the Spirit, with a completed Bible. Now that doesn't lead us to minimise Samson's bad habits, but God has been dealing progressively with human beings down the ages, teaching us what sin is, showing us how to deal with it, using the resources that he provides. Gordon Kelly again says, the Christian of the New Testament has more light than Samson ever did. More light than Samson ever. But, truth to tell, he still has the old, same old darkness clinging to him. If anything, we've less excuse because we're given far more. Firstly then, you won't get Samson unless you realise he's living in a very different time from ours. Secondly, no real Christian can fail to sympathise to some extent with Samson because we know the power, we know the hold of sin and bad habits that we got into. How we can have a hold on us. Again, that's no excuse to sin. But we have to be realistic about it. We have to have our responses to the sins of others conditioned and designed for us by our common need of grace. That idea presses on me a lot. We need to understand and relate to others conscious of the power of sin in a human life. How it presses on us. Thirdly, it looks to me as if the Lord very clearly reveals to us in Samson the folly of trusting in our gifts as if they were something we would produced or developed ownership of. You can take a haircut if you try and do that. Be aware there are times when the good parent allows the child to fall in order to have them realise what it is that enables them to stand. A good parent will allow a child to fall so they realise what it is that makes them stand, and God can do that with us. Samson fell an awfully long way, didn't he? Because he'd been relying, perhaps, on his gifting and ability to cover up the effects of his sin. And it comes a point with us as well. The 
and see how you stand with that. So it is with the Lord of heaven and earth, and he may allow us to fall in order that we realize there's no strength and no gifts that will enable us to stand outside of our humble reliance on him. The Bible calls this faith. We've got to watch our hearts. Because the best of gifts will fail us. But the one we trust never will. What are we make a Samson? Fourthly. It's a shortening list. Fourthly, God seems to design Samson not simply to draw a line in the sand against the Philistines. A line the people of Israel had not observed, which had led them to just becoming like the Philistines all around them and wandering away from them. God seems also to design Samson to sum up in one perfect flawed hero the weakness of the people's relationship to God in the time of the judges. We identify with the people who are amongst as well. Sadly, we soak up too much from them. Very clear warning to people of later generations after Israel had found peace. And we've got to learn fifthly the importance for overall usefulness of a life that is faithful to God's call so that we can finish well. Because it's very dicey to think that you can live a life that isn't faithful to God and yet still finish well. Do you know a terrible thing? I've seen that sort of thinking fail so hard. I've seen it more than once. It's the habit of a life that's built as a life is lived faithfully that enables a man and woman to finish well at the end. This man is the last of the judges, but again, as Kenny points out, Samson's trumpet calls not so much the last post, but the revalley for an era of significant spiritual reformation that's coming on the back of his work, which he will never see, but which God is going to do, because he's been and done That's his call once more to us in our time. When the Philistines quiet conquest of God's people as they lay on their backs waiting for their bellies to be scratched poses as great a threat to us now as it did to them in the days of that flawed, uber-gifted hero, Samson, from Dan.